Good Sunday morning and welcome to the December 17th, 2023 edition of the Pastor's Porch. I'm Pastor Brian Schmidt, pastor of Calvary Alliance Church in beautiful Hiawassee, Georgia. Now it's been a long time since I've done a Pastor's Porch, about four or five weeks perhaps. Uh, I was planning on taking a one week break from the Pastor's Porch as Debbie and I went down to Uruguay for what was supposed to have been a one week trip, uh, mission trip with our district. Uh, oddly enough, the Lord had other plans for me, including a heart attack, and so Debbie and I spent a little bit longer down in Uruguay than was expected, and so that has actually put a uh, delay on being able to get back and do the pastor's porch videos, but I am so glad to be back doing the video for you today and looking forward to also preaching at right here at Calvary Alliance Church uh, this Sunday, December 17th. But to get to the sermon today, have you ever tried to help somebody? Maybe to give them some comfort, to give them some advice, to give them some wisdom when they're going through a difficult time, only to have them say to you, well, you just don't understand what I'm going through. Or maybe they've said something like, you don't get it, or you're not in my situation, or you you shouldn't be judging me and telling me what to do. Maybe you've had that happen to you. Maybe you've said that to somebody when they tried to help you, and just possibly maybe you have thought that way about God at times. And maybe you've thought, uh, God doesn't get it. <clears throat> and I apologize for the little cough I have here. Uh, he doesn't get me. How can he understand? How does he really know what's going on? Why would and how can the God of the universe care about me? Maybe you've thought that way about God. But you know what? It's not unusual to feel that way. After all, we have influential and important leaders uh, in our world today that don't seem to care about the common people and don't seem to get where it's at. Uh, I even think about the current president of the United States and some of the things I see in the news about him, that he wants to ban gas stoves and he wants to require government employees, all government employees to drive electric vehicles and things like this. It just doesn't make sense uh, just for the ordinary person. He just doesn't get where we're at. Uh, Putin over there in Russia starting uh, started a war that's hurt thousands of not just Ukrainians, but his own people, Russians. And he, he just doesn't seem to get where the ordinary person's at. And then you got celebrity climate change activists that zip around in their Lear jets, their fancy jets from place to place and have conferences about uh, oceans and and taking care of the wildlife. And as they do so, they're eating fish from the oceans they're trying to protect. You know, it just doesn't make sense. And they want to tell us what we need to do. And it's ridiculous, all right? And so we have important influential leaders that today don't seem to care about people. And then maybe we've had in our own individual lives significant authority figures that should have cared but really didn't. <coughs> maybe we've had absent or out of touch parents. Maybe we've had teachers, educators that were unsympathetic, maybe pastors even that really didn't care. They got up and stood in front and they preached and taught about God. But when it came to really caring about the people in the pews, they were lacking somewhat. Well, with examples like these, it's understandable for us to be a little bit cynical consider concerning <coughs> higher powers and, and even and even with God. And also, perhaps a more important reason is that our sin creates a barrier between us and God. Our concept of God can be confused. Our understanding of God is limited and tainted. Now, where did this breakdown between God and us begin? Where did the sin barrier start? <coughs> <coughs> Well, we know that started way back in the Garden of Eden. And so let's just review a little bit. Uh, first of all, God created, and we know these things, God created everything perfectly, didn't he? Including mankind, including Adam and Eve. <coughs> God, Genesis tells us that God created everything. And what does it say? That it was very good. And, and Adam and Eve, they had a perfect environment. They didn't have to worry about bugs and weeds and sickness. It was a perfect environment. They had a perfect relationship with one another, right? They didn't have the tiffs and the arguments and the quarrels that 
uh, families have today. They had a perfect relationship, not just with one another, but they also had a perfect relationship with God himself, which is good because when God created man, he created man with a knowledge and a desire for himself, for God. All right, Ecclesiastes 3.11, which is one of my favorite verses in the scripture. I, I just love this verse. It says, he, God, has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, get this. He has put eternity in their hearts. All right. In other words, God has put a sense of himself because only God is eternal. God has put a sense of deity in the heart of humans. All right. And then he says, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. All right. Man was created in the image of God in order to have a personal relationship with God. It's just wonderful. That is one of the reasons why God created us. God created us to have a relationship with him, the God of the universe. How incredible is that? But unfortunately, we know that man sinned. And that relationship was broken. Now, this was not God's choice. No, it was man's choice. John 3, 19, Jesus said this, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. But get this, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. All right, Adam and Eve had a choice to make. They chose sin. They chose darkness. And ever since that first sin, all of mankind, every man and woman, boy and girl, have been sinners. We've been sinners by birth. That's who we are. It says in the book of Psalms, in sin my mother conceived me. We are sinners by action. That's what we do. It says in the book of Psalms again, there's none that does right, no, not one. And because of that sin, everything that was perfect was made imperfect. That perfect relationship with the environment is imperfect. Now we have weeds. Now we have bugs and mosquitoes. Now we have sickness and coughs and sniffles and heart attacks, all right? Now uh, we have an imperfect relationship with one another. Instead of uh, a perfect relationship that we love one another uh, unconditionally, we fight, we bicker, we have jealousy, we, we steal, there's rape, there's murders. It's just terrible. And then we also have an imperfect relationship with God. Because of sin, mankind has been separated from God and experiences death. First of all, death here on earth physically, but then later apart from God in everlasting punishment. So man sinned. That perfect relationship with God was broken and God's heart was broken. Yes, in his omniscience, God knew that this was going to happen, but in his infinite love, God's heart was broken as his dearest creation turned away. Turned away from God, choosing sin over obedience, choosing darkness over light, choosing death over life. But God, again, in his love, promised a savior. He began a plan to restore the relationship between himself and mankind. He promised a savior who would meet man in his sin and bring him back to God, the Father. This plan started Right there at the very moment in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3.15, God said, and I will put enmity between you. He's talking to Satan, the serpent at the time, between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. You shall bruise his heel, but he shall bruise your head. All right. That was that very first promise that there would be a savior, a redeemer who would restore the broken relationship that man had with God. Because there's no way that man can save himself. There's no way that sinful people can crawl out of the depths of sin and back into a right relationship with God, the creator. And so it's up to God in his infinite love to come down to man to provide a redeemer. And so God planned for the savior. God planned for the Messiah. In Genesis chapter 12, verse three, we learn that this Messiah would come from uh, Abraham. He would be a Hebrew. He'd be an Israelite, all right? Uh, you know, and by the way, that's one of the reasons today that there's so much hate against Jews, even today. It's because Jews are God's chosen people, have been since the very beginning of the book of Genesis. And then in Genesis 49, verse 10, we learned that the Messiah would be from the tribe of Judah. 
In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and 16, we see that this promise was passed on to the house of David. And then in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, we're just not taking time to read all these verses. It tells us that the, the Messiah would be born in the city of Bethlehem. And you know what? As we celebrate at Christmas, the birth of Jesus fulfilled the plan. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. We don't really think about this as being as these being Christmas verses, but they are really wonderful Christmas verses. It says, but when the fullness of time had come, all right, when just the perfect time, just the right time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, get this, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons, that that relationship might be restored. Again, we could not save ourselves from our sin. We cannot fix the broken relationship between man and God. Only God coming to us can bring us hope. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He, being the Son of God and then being born of the Virgin Mary, brought God to earth. Matthew 1, 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, you might know this, was it translated? God with us. And John chapter 1, verse 14 says, And the word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, all right, the word, that's what that is. And the word, the logos, Jesus, all right, being God himself, became flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow, this is incredible. Think about this. Jesus, being the Son of God, being God himself, became human so that he could identify with us in our humanness and then die on the cross as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Jesus came to the sinful, wretched. Just think about it. Jesus, the perfect Son of God, coming from the perfect place of heaven, full of glory and wonders. He left that place to come to this sinful, wretched world in order to restore the broken relationship between God and man. Jesus, in a very real way, downsized in order to get down to us, in order to lift us up to God the Father. Downsizing. We hear that word used a lot nowadays and people are buying tiny homes and stuff and they want to downsize. They're trying to get out of big homes with a lot of mess and clutter and upkeep and they're trying to simplify their lives. But can you imagine for a moment powerful, the powerful people, the influential and wealthy people downsizing their lives to help you? Just think for a moment. Can you imagine Bill Gates or Taylor Swift or Joe Biden or Donald Trump downsizing in any form or fashion in order to live where you live and to help you go through whatever difficulties you're going through? Can you imagine any of these people downsizing to have a personal relationship with you? Can you imagine them giving up a mansion and all their property to live in a single wide on your property? Can you imagine them giving up a limousine with a driver to drive their own used Chevy Nova in order to hang out with you? Can you imagine them giving up their five-star chef with unlimited resources to cook, and, and then to cook on their own, to, to make their own ramen noodles bought at the Dollar General? All right, can you imagine them giving up their positions of authority and influence to flip burgers at McDonald's? No, you know, it, it, it's not happening. But yet, yeah, think about it. Jesus gave up his rights. He gave up his privileges. He gave up his power as the son of God, being God himself, to come down to this earth in order to restore the broken relationship between God and man. It's the ultimate in downsizing. How incredible is that? And all we can do is say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus came to this earth. He lived a perfect life, died on the cross as the perfect sacrifice for sins, and then rose again to prove that he has power over sin and over death. Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus and in Jesus alone for your salvation? Have you allowed Jesus to heal that broken relationship between you and God the Father? Because nothing else, nobody else can fill that God-shaped hole that is in your heart that we read about in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. All right, God has put 
a God-shaped hole in your heart. He has put eternity in your heart. But people try to fill that hole with other things. They try to fill it with money. They try to fill it with power. They try to fill it with possessions, things like cars, boats, houses, video games, not pleasure, won't do it, drugs, alcohol, sex, not people, family and friends, not even religion, going to church, being baptized and those kind of things. Jesus and only Jesus is the way to have a restored relationship with God the Father. Because only Jesus can do that. But not only Jesus restores our relationship with God and gives us hope for life hereafter, but Jesus also, because he came to earth as a human, is able to help us through the difficulties of life here and now. He understands. You know that? He gets you. He knows what you're going through. Now, the circumstances are different, of course, but the foundational thoughts and feelings are the same. Jesus knows. Consider this for a moment because Jesus was human. Jesus knows what it was like physically. The Bible tells us there were times where Jesus was tired. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He experienced pain. Jesus knows what it's like spiritually to be tempted to have doubts. Jesus knows what it's like emotionally and what you're going through in terms of emotions because he was angry. There were times he was frustrated. There was times when he was sad. Jesus knows what it's like socially to be rejected and to be mocked, to be doubted, to be betrayed. All right. And so there's no reason for us to say, as I brought up at the beginning of the sermon today, there's no reason for us to say, you know what? God doesn't understand. God doesn't care. God doesn't know because he does. He does understand. He does care. He does know what we're going through because he experienced it through the person of Jesus Christ. Acts 27, this is a neat verse. I want to read this verse. And you're going to say, what in the world does this have? But stick with me here, all right? Acts 27, 17. And this is in the story of Paul being shipwrecked. All right, he's not quite shipwrecked yet, but they're getting there. They're out on the ocean in the ship and the storm has come up and they're doing everything they can to save the ship. All right, and there's this verse, Acts 27, 17. When they had taken it, and it's talking about the skiff, the, the little boat on board, they used cables to undergird the ship. And fearing lest they should run aground on certain sands, they struck sail and so were driven. I want to read part of that verse again. It says, they used cables to undergird the ship. Now that, that used cables, all right, what they would do is there's the ship and they would take cables and wrap cables, maybe four, five, six, how many times? Around, they, they wrap cables around the ship, the whole ship, tighten them up with the idea of trying to hold that ship together, all right? Today, it's known as frapping, F-R-A-P-P-I-N-G. But get this, the Greek word is boethia, all right? B-O-E-T-H-E-I-A, boethia, all right? And it, this word means to help by binding about holding together, all right? So do you have that picture in your mind, this Greek word boethia, frapping, using cables to hold the ship together, all right, in the midst of the storm. Now, now keep that word in mind, and we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. And these are familiar verses. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you've heard these before. It says, But seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, and that's what we've been talking about. Jesus came to this earth. Uh, he lived as a human, and now he's ascended back into heaven as it tells us in the book of Acts, all right? He says that he may offer both good gifts and sacrifices for sins. Get this, he can, whoops, I, I skipped, let me start over, all right? Seeing that we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let me start over here, it says, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, all right? We don't have a high priest who's like a, a Joe Biden or a Putin or, or somebody like that, all right? But who was in all points tempted as we are, 
because he was 100% human as well as 100% God, yet without sin. Praise God. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Grace to what? Help in time of need. You know what? That word help right there, that's the same word that's used in Acts 27, 17, Boethia, which talks about holding together uh, the cords that holds the boats together, right? Binding together to hold together. Same exact word. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus helps us. He holds us together in the storms of life. And that's because he has been here. <coughs> he was born. He grew up here. He lived here as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, as an adult. He gave his life for us as a human. All right? And, and so because he's been here, because he's been here on this earth and he's experienced what we are experiencing, he understands what we are going through. He gets us and he holds us. He wraps his arms around us and he helps us through the storms of life. That is so exciting. Jesus gets me. Jesus gets you. All right. He, he just didn't come do his thing and now he's out doing his own thing. No, he is our sympathetic high priest. He is our frapping. He is, he's the cables that holds us together in the storms of life. So two things today. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you have that relationship with God the Father restored through your faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross as he died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin? Have you put your faith in Jesus? And then secondly, for those of us who have put our faith in Jesus, are we trusting Jesus? Are we? Are, is our faith in Jesus to help hold us together in the storms of life? He gets you. He really does. He understands what you're going through. Even this holiday season, there's many of us that are struggling. There's many of you that are watching this video that are struggling. You're, you're, you're lonely. You're discouraged. You're depressed. You're worried. All kinds of things that you're dealing with. But you know what? Jesus cares. Jesus knows. Let him help hold you together. Father God, we thank you for Jesus today. Thank you that he came, he died on the cross as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Lord, thank you that through him, our sins are forgiven and we can have a personal relationship with you if we will just call on you and ask you to be our Lord and Savior. And then secondly, Lord, I just thank you that Jesus gets me. He understands what I'm going through today. He understands the hurt, the anxiety, the physical needs. <laughs> Uh, he understands all that because he's been there. He's done it. And, and so, Father, when we pray, it's not praying in vain, but it's praying with power because Jesus is our intercessor. And he, he takes our request. He takes them to you and he says, I know what they're going through. Help them. And, and, and you do. And Jesus does. And it's so wonderful to know that you get us. You understand and you help. Help us to put our faith in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. Being our great high priest. Amen. All right. Well, I don't have all my little note cards that I usually have. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, I do pastor Calvary Alliance Church. And Calvary Alliance Church is located on Highway 76 East in Hiawassee, directly across from the Towns County Schools. In fact, I can look out the window right there and see the schools. Today happened to be, because I'm doing the video on Friday, the last day of school for the break. So uh, I won't be driving bus for a couple of weeks now. Uh, some people think I shouldn't be driving bus just because I had the heart attack, but that's okay. We're getting the job done. But anyway, we're located right across from Towns County Schools in the Chateau Harbor Plaza. Sunday morning, we have our Sunday morning service at 1030. As always, nothing fancy. All right, just family, and that's a key word for us here at Calvary Alliance Church. We had our annual meeting this past Wednesday, and that was something I highlighted about our little fellowship of believers is that we're family. 
But uh, we're a family that loves others, and we would love to welcome you into our family. So Sunday mornings, 1030, we have our Wednesday evening prayer service at 6 o'clock. encourage you to come to that. Tuesday morning, we have ABF, our adult Bible fellowship, down at the fellowship hall at 927. And uh, while I have been sick and out, uh, Carol has stepped up and been doing an awesome job doing a little study on spiritual warfare. It's been fascinating. I've been able to sit in on two of the episodes. Episodes? I don't know if that's the right word or not, lessons. And she's been doing a most excellent job and great discussion. And spiritual warfare is a real thing. Sometimes we want to poo-poo it off and it's like, ah, it's no big deal, but it is a big deal. And so I encourage you to come to that. And uh, we have other things going on as well, but those are the main ones that I can think of right now. And uh, next Sunday, we're going to be having a special uh, Christmas Eve service as such. So I uh, might do another little sermon but we're going to have um, the church family participating in various ways next Sunday morning. So that's going to be fun. So join us if you can. Calvary Alliance Church, Highway 76 to East, Sunday morning, 1030. To find out more about our church, you can go to calvaryalliancechurch.org. And then we are a part of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. Uh, you can go to cmalliance.org. Find out more about what this Christian and Missionary Alliance is all about. God bless. We'll talk to you again soon.